Picture a world with three sprawling continents, a semi-intricately designed world of different climates and terrains. Central to this world are the four crystals. They control the fundamental elements of life itself and are worshipped like gods by the Lufinians, a people whose lineage stretches back to those who once resided among the clouds. But not everything is peaceful. The Wind Crystal, the divine force that controls the very breath of the planet, begins to darken. Cue the arrival of Tiamat, the beastly fiend of the wind. Tiamat seizes control of the ethereal floating castle, forcing the Lufinians to flee their lofty home. Things are not much better elsewhere. The Water Crystal isn't having a good time either. It's falling under a dark spell too. The colossal kraken stirs, causing titanic storms which darken the water crystal even further and plunge a sacred shrine near the town of Onrak into the briny depths. Moving on to the earth crystal, a previously benevolent force that's now under the shadow of an undead lich. This lich, with all the grace and charm of a disgruntled troll, decides a deep, dark cave is the perfect abode. Unsurprisingly, this causes the once fertile crops of Melman to shrivel and perish. Just typical, isn't it? If that wasn't enough, Marilith, who could be mistaken for a snake on steroids, awakens and the fire crystal darkens. She causes wild, raging fires that scorch the earth across the continent. A bit of overkill if you ask me. So with all four crystals having the worst week ever and turning dark, four gallant warriors turn up at the kingdom of Cornelia. They're each carrying an orb that's as dark as the elemental crystals. An odd choice of accessory, perhaps, but who am I to judge? The king of Cornelia, who could really use a break, sends the warriors off on a little trip. Their destination? The Temple of the Fiends, also known as the Chaos Shrine. Their task? Defeat Garland, the local evil knight who's got big dreams of world domination. After showing Garland who's boss, the king, ever the handyman, fixes a bridge for them. Then the warriors turn their attention to Provoca, a town under the thumb of Bicky and his band of merry pirates. They free the town, defeat the pirates, and for their troubles, nab themselves a nifty little ship. Up next is a little spot of crown retrieval for an elven king, who shockingly reveals himself to be the not-so-nice dark elf, Astos. After a quick scuffle, Astos is defeated and the warriors are rewarded with a crystal eye, which they graciously give to Matoya, a blind witch. In exchange, Matoya provides an herb, or tonic depending on the version of the game you play, that's able to lift a nasty curse placed by Astos on an elven prince. The prince, relieved from his forced siesta, offers the group a mystical key, a master of unlocking if you will. The mystical key proves its worth beyond any treasure, for it unveils a horde of TNT sticks within a locked storage in Cornelia. Who keeps explosives in a closet, you might ask? Well, who am I to question castle storage tactics? They also lend a hand to a bunch of dwarves led by Neric, unsealing a passage blocked by some inconveniently placed boulders. Now Neric takes these dangerous trinkets and, showing a surprising expertise in controlled demolitions, blasts open a solid landmass that was previously impeding sea passage between the Aldi Sea and the rest of the world. Suddenly, the world just got a lot bigger for our warriors, and all thanks to the power of explosives safely stored in a royal closet. Now, the warriors discover the town of Melmond, a place that's been having a particularly rough time due to the previously mentioned Lich. In a bid to turn the tide, the brave heroes journey into a deep cave, confront the Lich, and dispatch him before taking on Marilith in the fiery heart of Mount Gulg, a volcano that's as moody as they come. 
After these epic battles, what better way to treat themselves than with a new airship? Because why not? With their new set of wings, the warriors make their way to the Dragon Caves in the Cardia Islands. There they meet the one and only Bahamut, a dragon so legendary you'd expect a theme song to play when he appears. Bahamut tests the warriors, probably because he's bored, and they come out stronger on the other side. But there's no rest for our heroes, they've got a kraken to defeat at the sunken shrine. And then it's off to the floating castle to deal with Tiamat. You remember Tiamat, right? Fiend of the wind. Not exactly a friendly house guest. Having dispatched the four fiends, the warriors find a portal in the Chaos Shrine that somehow hurls them 2,000 years into the past. There, they meet the creature known as Chaos, an entity so evil he decided to create the four fiends to do his dastardly work. In an interesting twist, the warriors get to do a spot of time-traveling deja vu, facing the fiends again, but this time in the past. They learned that Chaos is actually Garland. Yes, that Garland. He's been brought back in time by the four great forces, allowing him to send the four fiends into the future, therefore creating a time loop where he can be immortal. The warriors, probably slightly annoyed at the BS at this point, defeat Chaos, break a time loop, and bring peace back to the world. No biggie. However, due to the pesky time loop's destruction, no one, not a single soul, remembers that the warriors saved the world. Probably not the thank you they were hoping for, but hey, at least we remember their story, and what a story it is. So that's Final Fantasy 1 for you. An epic tale of crystals, fiends, and time loops. A classic that reminds us that no matter how dark the crystals get, there's always a band of warriors ready to save the day. As you can see, even from the very first game, Final Fantasy storytelling was way ahead of its peers. Featuring time travel, time loops, and shocking revelations, this is why it set the precedent for arguably the greatest JRPG franchise ever created. What about you? What do you think about Final Fantasy 1? Do you love it? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time! <laughs>